thank my Madam Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters. About a year ago, right around this time, I started to plan a road trip from Wasilla, Alaska to Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Mileage is 3,555 miles from point A to point B and all points in between. We were driving a pickup truck with a large trailer behind it and doing the manly thing, since I was the man of the trip, I did all the pre-maintenance uh, inspections on the vehicle and the trailer, changed the oil and made sure air was in the tires. We set off on our day about 12 noon, made it through all of Alaska just fine. Had no problems, we rolled into Beaver Creek, which is the first tiny town on the opposite side of the border in the Yukon Territory. Filled up with gas, and I did a quick walk around the vehicle and noticed that we had picked up a screw in one of the trailer tires. I figured, well, it's not gonna be a big deal because I got a spare for the trailer. Well, when I pulled it off, I noticed it was a bit light. I forgot to put the air in the spare tire. <laughs> <laughs> we happened to be at a gas station that I happened to have a mechanic shop that closed 20 minutes before we rolled into town. The mechanic had already gone home for the night. So we ended up staying the night there at the motel. It was a trailer that had been divided into three sections that we paid well, way too much money for for the night, but we did. We ended up getting the trailer tire fixed in the morning and off we are and again. We were trying to make this trip as quickly as possible just because Carolyn and I both decided we can drive about 1,600 miles to her house in Grand Prairie, Alberta, where I was going to drive a second vehicle and she could continue on the truck and trailer and we could split up and go on our own pace and have a nice little road trips of our own. When we ended up leaving Beaver Creek, we had a good day. We made it all the way through Watson Lake around 8 o'clock at night. Watson Lake is an interesting town if you've ever driven the Alcan Highway. It has the sign forest. And it was started out by an Army Corps engineer that was helping build the highway. And he put up a sign saying how far it was from Watson Lake to his home, I believe in New York. And now it has turned into this forest of license plates. <laughs> thousands upon thousands of license plates. We decided to press on through Watson Lake. About 40 minutes outside of Watson Lake, I was already sleeping in the truck. Got woken up to this really loud squealing noise. This is where my day went to bed. <laughs> we ended up figuring out that the rear differential on the truck had started to go out. So we turned the truck around. Carolyn decided that since she had the big credit card, she would hitchhike back to town and find us a tow truck and get us towed back into Grand Prairie, well, back into Watson Lake, and eventually get to Grand Prairie. She could not get hit, picked up by, as a hitchhiker. Semi-truck drivers are forbidden by law to pick up hitchhikers in Canada. She was lucky enough to get picked up by a Greyhound bus driver. He drove her on into Watson Lake, dropped her off at the one mechanic shop that still happened to be open at well after midnight. <laughs> so here comes the tow truck. It's a big flatbed tow truck. He comes, hooks us up, tows us back into Watson Lake. We pull into Watson Lake and he says, well, what hotel would you like to stay? We're like, we don't care, we just want a bed. I go and knock on the doors of the five hotels in Watson Lake. Not a room to be found. So we ended up sleeping inside the truck on top of the tow truck. <laughs> picture that in your head. <laughs> it was a long night with a lot of bad sleep to say the least. The following morning, the mechanic at the tow truck um, shop came out unloaded the truck from the tow truck, looked at it and confirmed it was the rear differential going out on the truck. He said it'd be three to four weeks to get parts because we're out there in the middle of nowhere. He gets parts by Greyhound bus that come through twice a week. And so Carolyn decided to get on the phone with her husband who lives in Grand Prairie about six hours down the road. And he says, well, I'll come and get you. And so he calls up one of his neighbors and they literally drop what they're doing and within 30 minutes of that phone call, they're on the road to Watson Lake, driving six hours to come rescue us. One of us, one of them to tow the trailer that we were hauling, one of them to tow the truck. Meanwhile, we're all looking around going, well, there's three of us here, we got two pickup trucks coming, it's gonna be a pretty uncomfortable ride back to, to 
Grand Prairie. So I was with my wife's younger sister, Kimberly, who was 15 at the time, and we decided we were going to take the Greyhound bus over to Watson Lake, back to from Watson Lake over to Grand Prairie. That's a 22 hour ride on the Greyhound bus. Not a lot of fun, but we made it through and everything. Once we got over to Grand Prairie, Carolyn in the truck and the trailer had made it through. We split up. I took off in her minivan. That was more of the reason for me to go on this road trip. We took off for Lake Havasu City from the farm. We made it down to the border in sweet wheatgrass, Montana. And Carolyn wanted us to import this van to her into the United States from Canada. We thought, wouldn't it be a problem? It's a brand new Honda Odyssey minivan. We know it meets United States EPA standards. We didn't have the green sticker. <laughs> There's a little green sticker that shows that your van meets it. So we contacted Honda Motor Company. They said it'd be three to four days for us to get this little letter. <laughs> though I'm thinking to myself, just hit the print button and fax it to me, but they couldn't. So we ended up being turned around at the border, being denied entry back into the United States, got sent back. We ended up staying in a hotel about 90 miles back into Canada, stay there for Carolyn and Peter to come back down after getting the truck was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> they brought, came in. Peter took the van in through the border as a Canadian on vacation. We came through a couple hours later in the truck and trailer, rolled into Sweetgrass, Montana, and exchanged vehicles once again. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to go take a road trip over to Loveland, Colorado to see my sister, while Carolyn and Peter took the truck. We all eventually converged in Lake Havasu City. Coming home, I thought, my road trip adventures are over. They weren't. Flying home, I was flying first class. And got checked in, everything's ready to go. Out the gate, they saw me, I'm sorry, you need to come see us at the gate, at the gate check-in. Go up there, they tell me, I'm sorry, you've been removed from first class. There's a government dignitary who would like to sit in your seat. We have to let them sit there. You get to flying coach. <laughs> oh, no. Unfortunately, I was kind of had my hands tied, and they said either fly and coach or don't fly. So I flew home, and after many phone calls with Alaska Airlines, I come to find out it was actually a U.S. Air Marshal who was actually allowed to pick their seat on the plane. And that is my trip, and I hope never to repeat it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, remind me.